A very good day to all you patriots out there, and welcome to Tall Ship Tuesday. When last we met, I had shared with you the story of how Providence was the first ship to break through the British blockade in April of 77. Acting Captain Jonathan Pitcher was in command at that time, and after provisioning in New Bedford, he set sail for the northeast, where he soon found himself in the very fight of his life. As a general rule, naval battles are rare, and I experienced none during my time aboard Providence. And yet, Captain Pitcher faced one during his very first voyage. As I understand it, the cruise was uneventful until he was just a few miles out of Cape Breton. At that time, Captain Pitcher spotted through his glass several sails, and even at that distance, they could hear the roar of the cannons. The officers were still assessing the situation, when a brig called Lucy suddenly bore down on them and opened a fire from a distance and without provocation. I suppose the Continental Ensign flying from the mask was provocation enough. <laughs> but being unprepared for a naval encounter at this particular time, Providence turned about and sailed out of range to prepare for the battle ahead. I can easily envision the scene. Drummers beating to quarters as tubs of sand and water are brought up and placed between the guns. Smouldering slow matches were placed alongside them. Around the deck, running up and down the ladders, the young boys acting as powder monkeys to ferry powder to the quarter deck and the main deck to the guns. The gun crews stacking cannonballs and wadding in piles ready for action. The decks were cleared and sprinkled with sand to provide purchase for footholds as the deck became slick with blood. Aye, I can envision it as clearly as if I was there myself. Our Marine Lieutenant John Trevet later wrote that when all was ready, Captain Pitcher ordered the sails shortened to allow for the brig to draw alongside us. But if Lucy thought she was getting a, an easy capture that day, Captain Pitcher certainly had different intentions. Providence set forth a torrent of cannonballs and grape shot, and within 40 minutes, cut down most of the enemy colours. But the brig returned fire, and so they engaged in a combat for 40 more minutes, at close range, exchanging broadsides, until finally, Providence cut down the topmast of Lucy, and the victory was secured. Now, Captain Pitcher was severely wounded during that fight, and yet he refused to leave the quarterdeck. A man of true valour, I must say. And so, uh, Trevet had to be the one to go aboard the enemy ship. He wrote later that when he arrived, the ground and the deck were littered with bodies of the dead and wounded. He could not even get a foothold in order to uh, find the captain. What a day for Providence! her first naval battle, and a rousing success. Of course, this being attributed to the ability of the crew to heave to and follow orders in a quick and meaningful manner. The gunners carried out their duty without flinching. The lieutenants carried out the captain's orders with calm and authority. And all in all, the best ship won the day. So three cheers for Providence and the Continental Navy. Huzzah, indeed. Now, although this story is one of the more glorious ones that I have to tell about Providence, I do suppose there is, of course, a moral in here as well. Now, during this time when I've been telling you these stories of Providence, it's come to my attention that uh, any of these victories are entirely due to the ability of the crew. And this does not only carry out to uh, a capacity in which we've got a naval engagement or at arms with an enemy, but the ability to work together, to carry out one's duties to the best of one's ability. Now that is something that can carry through to any line of work at all. Indeed, it is important to choose one's companions carefully, as one's companions can decide whether one's mission is successful or not. And so I shall leave you to think about what sort of qualities you'd be looking for in your companions in order to carry out your duties and secure some victories in your own time. I thank you very much for your time today. 
and I hope to see you again next Tuesday.